The title of this lecture is Conflict Management. As a leader, you will encounter many situations in your career that will involve the handling of conflict. This is part of the job responsibility to manage conflict. Organizations sometimes face conflict with other organizations, but most of the time, the conflict to be resolved is the more regular type of conflict within the organization. Between the followers, there can be disagreements, tension, or even conflict. The leader must try to regulate such conflict through diplomacy. To accomplish this, the leader must give each side a chance to speak and voice their opinion. After all the points are made, the leader needs to communicate the points provided so that each side understands each other's viewpoints. Unfortunately, this process would work if people did not have opposing interests or emotionality, but this is simply not the case. The leader needs to do more than this. You would think this wouldn't be the case, but conflict may even be increased after each side has explained their issues. As part of the debate, frustration may set in and people may start to react uncontrollably. The manager needs to control the potentially escalating situation by acting in an opposite manner to how the two sides are acting. This means that the manager must act consistent, controlled, rational, and logical. Further, the manager must make a point to not get drawn into the conflict and to use good judgment in making decisions. All of these things should help prevent the situation from spiraling out of control. There are times, however, where control of the situation is lost. Usually, when people are in a conflict, they have a choice to make. They can both lose control of themselves and escalate the conflict, or they can tone it down, inhibit their aggression, and maintain control. The benefit they seek in losing control is that they will then pursue their own interest in trying to dominate the other party, thus getting their way. However, if they choose to inhibit their aggression, then they are prioritizing on maintaining the quality of the relationship. Unfortunately, many people give in to their impulses and lose control of the conflict situations. The reason for this is unfortunate, and it is that once the conflict has occurred, it leaves a permanent mark, one that cannot be undone. The end result is that trust is lost in the relationship. Now I've mentioned a bit about the role of the manager in managing conflict. However, my arguments imply that conflict must be regulated as escalating conflict is a negative thing. This is not always the case, as conflict can actually be escalated for useful reasons. Consider a manager who has subordinates that are not well liked by the manager's colleagues. After analyzing his subordinates, the manager determines there is nothing wrong or being done wrong by any of his subordinates. The manager reasons that his own colleagues have no case and are being a nuisance. If the manager were to attempt to reduce the conflict, it is not likely the solution would yield a good long-term result. After all, what incentive do the manager's colleagues, which are at his level, have to reduce their constant complaints about the subordinates? However, if the manager were to allow his impulsivity to be expressed a little bit, and thus escalating the conflict, the manager would be heard, and most likely it would be very effective. The point is that conflict that is done strategically, but not out of irrational emotionality, may be an effective tool and just what is needed sometimes.